This is a two-part poem about leaves. He makes her pancakes on school days, uses half-empty cider bottles for pan oil and flips them like 10 cents every time your bed's made. Flips them like his golden syrup women, a stack of unread newspapers dusted with cinnamon. On weekends, she escapes busking for mauve pippies down the coast where the galaxies are developed in a dark room, star by star. Where campfires kick sparks against her shin and foiled bananas melt with chocolate and marshmallow. She weaves a willow tree tiara to distract her hands and says to the charred emptiness, I'm leaving for a while. And then she sends it in a text. Phone in hand, he smiles, submissive, and swigs cider from the bottle, pancakes for breakfast again. Part two. I meet the taxi driver in his review mirror, two crinkled eyes waiting to drink stories in. He has a backpack full of parentheses and sleeves full of detours. He drives with a cape of fallen autumn leaves behind him and while I've been drip-fed American superheroes my whole life, I don't recognize him. <laughs> Maybe David was his name. A forgotten king or the thorn in the shoe sole of a giant. David's own feet are weary hay from slamming the brakes, seatbelt hanging loose by his side. But his words weave those fallen leaves into kites so they can fly again makes leaving home feel more like arriving. <laughs> makes leaving home feel more like arriving. For 20 minutes we lose sight of time talking stories about nothing. You know how talking about nothing is everything, right? David says he plays jazz in a band, his hands used to moving with music. Now they grip the wheel easy, watching for movement in peripherals. His voice is a walking bass line or broken road lines, harmonizing with the beep of the meter, mining my conversation for details about an Australian life. There's nothing in it for him but blinding headlights. He says, I've got this crackerjack love for Yvonne Goolagong, the Australian tennis player from the 80s. He doesn't love her for her looks mind, more like the way she moves when she serves right through the TV screen. Leaves him with this suction cup ball in depth where his heart used to be. How holy is that, he says. I saw you wandering out there, wondering how life goes, because sometimes life grows static and static doesn't make light bulbs glow. Yeah, I say, sometimes you got to any smush gun of yourself right in the funny bone. Sometimes you gotta smile back at the strangers in the street, those tulips with half full cups damn it straight up through the concrete. And he's like, yeah, how about we leave hostility strung like loosened ties around drunken necks? Who needs a necktie anyway? Give me chest hair any day. Drop some sugar in my coffee. Turn round and wink as you leave. Leave me a note on the gas station toilet seat saying, it's okay, I was also here. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, grinning in agreement like, yeah, that'd be all right. And the car is suspended beside the top branches of bare autumn trees held up by his superpowers and all of this story. And maybe David hits the brakes for the very last time, crinkled eyes in the rearview mirror, and he says, hey, I hope one day that I find you again. Or maybe he says, that'll be $27. <laughs>